we're going to meet Emmanuel, who was a, a witness to Michael Brown's shooting and actually like tweeted the whole thing. And when we first spoke with him, he wasn't super comfortable about talking to us. But he's actually a rapper, a musician, and he wrote a song about it. So we're going to listen to the song and talk to him about what he saw. I grew up in Ferguson, Missouri, and I actually lived by the scene of Michael Brown's murder. When the event happened, I was at home, I live tweeted the whole thing. And then me live tweeting it actually blew up way further than I thought it would. I thought it would be just just tweets. I thought I had just witnessed something that would change my life, but it changed America. Why was like your first instinct like, oh my God, this shit is going on right outside my window. Let me get on my phone, let me get on Twitter. But I was on Twitter at the time. And I usually, every time something major happens in my life, I hop on Twitter because that's just always been my first form of communication when something happens to me. Do you ever go back to your tweets and kind of read through them and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I did it. I do it every day. Did you feel while you were doing it that, oh my God, I'm documenting this huge thing or is Mm -hmm. that something that hit you I didn't know it was a huge thing. I didn't even know it was going to be a huge thing. You weren't scared? It was more adrenaline rush than scared. I don't know. Do you ever have to think like, oh my God, I'm watching this, like I'm yeah, watching yeah. a cop? Should yes, die. yeah, that's, that, was, that was my initial reaction. Not more so like, I can die too. It was more like, this just happened. Like a cop just killed a guy in front of my apartment. And what about like the four hours that Mike Brown was just laying there? Like you tweet through those two? Um, yeah, yeah, I tweeted through those two. I tweeted through basically the whole event from the um beginning to end. I didn't tweet all the details about it, but I, you know, I had to explain my case to the FBI. I had to get a lawyer. And did you talk to people in the community about it? Like, I don't know if people from Mike's family maybe came up to you as well. I talked to a couple people. I, did, I haven't talked to Mike's family. Um, I actually don't know how that would go. Yeah. I don't know how I can... I don't know if I can look his mom in the eyes without being emotionally affected. And this song is basically just to explain my viewpoint, my um, life from my point of view, basically, my perception. It's the only thing I can explain, and song is my best form of communication. So I figured I'd write this song. When Trayvon died, everybody was an activist. Imagine when you in your crib and see the shit happening. The cops blasted them after that, niggas ravaging. Now you expect to break, but now I'm break for niggas trafficking. They throwing tear gas, I'm hearing gunshots, I duck them all. Mom crying, dad worried, they don't want their son involved. How you grab a store violently without a gun involved? Did you shoot a man in cold blood when he running off? Now I need a lawyer seeing anything, think I'm the one to call, but I don't talk to media, so please enough, it's running hard, they broadcast a lot of cases. Can you point the one they solve? Nah, niggas, I'm a dark streets, hard to run across. I be chasing dreams in the night. But I can't escape these dreams in my life. River scene in my life. When I seen Big Mike got shaken up, nigga had to tweet that site. If you seen that night, they ran in the QT, burned it down. West floor saying looting. Cops posted in my street. 20 niggas deep guns pointed and my people still gather beautifully. It was about the looting scenes. I ain't take a fucking thing. We ain't all coons. No nigga got vices. We don't all use and we ain't all fools. Martial arts since they kicked in. Martial arts shit being different. Seen the point guns at handicaps, women, the children. Can we get peace, please? What well, we gotta have a seat, please? Supposed to praise you. Get on weak knees, pray your scope, don't see me, this shit ain't easy We in the middle of a fight, and all we want is just RP, Big Mike, real talk Niggas die every day Mamas cry every day Niggas die every day Mamas cry every day, so a nigga sympathize Couldn't imagine my mom on fire, let us pray, nigga Niggas die every day Mamas cry every day. Niggas die every day. Mamas cry every day, so a nigga sympathize. Couldn't imagine my mom on fire. Let us pray, nigga. RP my ground, man. People can die in any situation in any city, and there there are mothers grieving for murders every single day. I remember growing up. My dad watching Fox 2 News, he turned it on at 9 o'clock and was like, let's see who died today. Like, let's see what happened in St. Louis today. And we were actually high on a murder list, like high on the And people, and what's bad is people were proud of it. People were proud of us being high on a murder list. Proud of us, like, being a bad city. And I, I never agreed with it. I never, I stayed away from that crowd. I stayed away from people who promoted violence. I want this song to be the groundwork. I want people to see how I feel, how, how it affected me personally, before I testify. And so mm-hmm. what do you think is going to happen here, like, after this case is over? Do you think people are just going to 
move on and kind of go back to life as usual? Or you think it's changed the community in some way that's gonna stay? Uh, only time will tell, really. Only time will tell. I've seen a lot of unity in our community, more so than I've seen before this event. So I'm praying that that will stay. Hey, no, no, no.